Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Anime King 2 And today I'm gonna be giving you Part 12 of What If Naruto is Abandoned and Awaken a Kiki Genkai Remember to get this one to 100 likes as usual Share this to all of your friends in your social media platform And also, go ahead and check out the brand new episode over on Anime King 3 Of What If Naruto Had the ultimate nature bloodline over on Anime King 3 and enjoy that guys and I also post a brand new episode over on Anime King of What If Naruto was the hope of the Uchiha clan. So go ahead and check out that and enjoy. Remember if you're new to go ahead and click that red subscribe button and become a part of the Anime King family. And thank you for all of your help and your support and stay tuned for another episode coming on this channel later on that I hope you guys will enjoy. So yeah, without further ado, what is to be in this new episode start? The intro. So the last spot we left off, as Naruto and his group was currently inside of the first phase of student exams, Kabuto came over as he would like to give them information, as Sasuke was the one to ask about information about Naruto, but there wasn't really much on him, and not to mention when they heard that he was a son of the fourth Kage though, still an interest in there started to get antsy as he really asked him if that was true. Now that his father was dead, it seemed like they weren't taking their anger out on him. As Naruto pointed towards a girl that seemed so familiar, yet he didn't know her, he didn't know why. As Natsumai knew exactly who she was after sensing what was inside of her. But she decided to tease Naruto by not telling him because of what he did earlier. So, with that they took the first part of the test, which was rather easy when you found out the behind it. As the Whirlpool team was acting rather arrogant, seeing that the others were leaving and they already knew what to do. As Naruto left behind a message on the paper telling Ibiki, that Kabuto was a spy for Urchimaru. So with that, Uncle came in as the rest of the test was going to be resuming tomorrow. The second part was the forest of death. So with that, Naruto had one of his clones teach Haku some of the Hayaton Jutes that he learned at Land of Snow. While he made his way as he went on a date with both Hana and Natsumai. As they had a wonderful time together. But later that night, Naruto sent a message towards Yujito. That was her name. As she was rather subdued towards Raikage's son, a boy of their group who likes to drink despite just being in his late teens. As the other member asked her why does she take that all, well, she was used to it, as she didn't want to be punished. She seemed rather scared at the thought of that. She got a message that she was supposed to meet up with that boy. She really didn't know what the connection was but there was something, she didn't know what it was. But she decided to follow as she brought her weapons just in case though. She was out of the village so anything could happen. This was not tuning exams. This was not the tournament so anything could happen out here. That is where she met Naruto as the both of them started to talk. She was cautious until Naruto asked her if he could see her stomach. The Nibi inside her head told her to show him it as Naruto decided to check on her stomach. As she was confused, her seal did not even react but yet he knew she put him at Kona point given the fact that she found that he was a two-tailed Jinjoike. As when he said that he was also one, it got her angry as she broke him through the tree thinking that he was mocking her in some way. But then Nibi told her that it was true. She didn't sense that first but something was different but he was one indeed. She apologized but yet they still did not know the reason why they seemed so familiar to each other. There was just something there that the both of them did not know what it was. So yeah guys, that's basically as we left off the guest game. Switch across and play check for yourself so we begin this new episode. Wait, so this is not your real form. Said Yuji to us, both her and Naruto was currently still in the dense forest. Her eyes could see it. He could not hide his true appearance from people with Kikigenkai, certain Kikigenkai, and demonic chakra thrown through your system. When you look closely, you saw it. It was like a hazy figure surrounding him, a much taller, bulkier person than a smaller form right here. Nope, said Naruto. She stared at him. Well, are you going to show me? She asked. Well, I don't see what is in for me. This form should be fine, he said. Still playing the ignorant card. I stripped for you, damn it. 
She blushes. She just realized what she said. I suppose that is true. Very nice by the way he said. As she blushed right from the comment. Just don't freak out, okay? As she nodded. As he cancelled his genjutsu as he transformed to his true form. With his tail switching behind him. Ah, said Naruto as he cracked his neck. It feels good to let go like this. He then turned as Yujita was on the ground. As she could barely look up. He then realized that he let go of all his chakra once he released into his true form. A mistake. Sorry Yujito chan he said. As he limited himself quickly. I forgot to keep my chakra and key limiters on. As he helped her to her feet. On the other hand she was shocked as she looked at him. How? Oh, how's he so strong? Why don't you ask him kitten? It would be smart to know how much stronger potential enemies are. Especially if they're Jinjulikis. Yujito still couldn't believe that the fourth Akage would turn his son into a Jinjuliki. The life of a Jinjuliki was miserable and horrible, well, in her case especially. Naruto san she said, how, how are you that strong? Well, that wasn't my full power, just what my normal chakra and output, he said. Wait, that wasn't your full strength? As she took a good look at him, as her face started to heat up a bit, her cheeks got a bit pink. He's, he's, a foxy salmon you just want to ride, until you break, Isanami said, finishing sentence for her. What said Yujito as she blushed hard, as she couldn't tear her eyes away from him and his new form that he was in. Come on, just because I'm stuck inside you doesn't mean I can't enjoy the view. And what of you kitten? Hey, you alright said Naruto as he saw her face redden and her eyes glazed over slightly. Yes, uh, sorry, your appearance. It just startled me, that's all she said. Well to answer your question, no, that wasn't my full strength. Far from it. These tales aren't just for show, you know. Nibi can probably explain it better than I can. What? Nibi shouted at hearing the mention of tales. What is it? asked Yujito. He, he's a Henyu, but he's so young. Not so my Samo's own seal away 13 years ago. So for this boy to be a Henyu, and already have 5 of her tails under his control, it's unreal. Wait, you're telling me that he already went through his Sosiai, and he's this far already in the Kiwi's chakra? Yes, this boy, no, this man. Whatever you do, do not make an enemy out of him. You know, said Naruto, I can't exactly hear your dialogue with the Nibi. Well, I don't mind looking at your face. When Scrunch replied that he's all cute, said Naruto. She looked cheapish, sorry about that, she said. How did you know I was talking with her? That's new, said Naruto. I didn't know the Nibi was a female. But, to answer your question, I got my fair shares of inner dialogue with Natsumai-chan, so I know the look. And for my second question, I would like to know why your comrades call you, Bukiheim, with such a disdain, he asked in a serious tone. She turned her head, sadness across her face. She was a powerful Kunobichi, powerful than all those, who tried to force their will on her, and guess she allowed them to control her. Because you're ignorant, she said, her anger about her past leaking out in her words. I see. You weren't treated well in Kumu, are you, he said. She looked at him. She didn't know what was come telling her, to stay here with him. Her thoughts were telling her to go back to her room, that it was dangerous to be not here, that if anyone were to find out, especially the person who she definitely didn't want to find out, things would be very bad for her. But yet, she wanted to stay out here with him. Strangely enough, she didn't want to go back. Perhaps it was because he had the connection and understanding of what it means to be a Chinjulke. Perhaps he was one of the few people to actually ask about her life and care enough to listen. No, she said. Well, I guess you wouldn't know what it's like, being the son of a Kaiki, but most Chinjulkes are scorned where they live. We are hated, despised, cursed. And if you live in a really bad place, people would try to do despicable things to you. For me, when I was a child, every day was a test of survival. I had no one to help me, no one cared. People hunted me like an animal because of what I was. I hated it, and I hated them. But I was too weak to do anything but survive, and I was forced to live in that hellhole for the first 12 years of my life. Until someone actually had the courage to help, the love, and the affection to adopt me, she said, as she held back her tears and sadness. As Nurta heard her story, another person was cynically abused and mistreated like him and got her. But in the end, he could only laugh. Not a laugh of humor, not a sarcastic laugh, an empty, hollowed laugh. But she didn't see that way. It's not funny, you bastard, she said. As she didn't know why he was laughing at her pain. My life was miserable. And you're laughing at my pain as she got up to walk away. But her hand was grabbed. As she turned to look at him. I wasn't laughing at your story. I was laughing at the fact that you think I didn't go through the same thing. I could yell at you for being ignorant about my life because you don't know me. Instead I'll just show you how my life was inside the village. But you think treating me as a prince. As he went through hand signs. Demon art. Sense of the past he said. Once she heard the name she felt a pulse of chakra. As one of the tails touched her and everything went white, 
As she found herself in Konoha, she didn't know where she was, over here. As she saw Naruto, what's going on? Look. As they saw, another Naruto, a small one, running for his life. As Yujito watched the scene in front of her unfold, as she stood there with him and watched everything unfold, as a group of guys, 10 of them in total, were chasing him down, and they cornered him. Naruto was just 5 years old. By the time it was done, she was crying. Enough. Enough, she said. No more. And she couldn't take the sight. As Naruto snapped his finger and everything, turned white once more. As that was his worst memory. An unspeakable act that was done to him. She opened her eyes and realized they were back in the farts. Naruto, she said. As she immediately hugged him. I was being ignorant about your life. I'm so sorry, she said. As she cried and hugged him. Even as she cried against him, she wasn't so sure why. She was acting so strongly. Her feelings of rashness were being thrown out the window and she felt utter pain after seeing what he went through and she wanted to comfort him. This entire meeting turned her emotions all upside and down. She hasn't been this emotional since. She was adopted by her mother that day when she became so much emotional when she found out that a woman actually loved her. They call her her daughter and she became her mother. She was a shinobi and she saw some dreadful horrible things but what she saw it made her feel so much pain seeing him in agony and pain and she hugged him tighter. It's alright, said Naruto. You didn't know. I'm sorry, she said. I, I don't know what else to say. It's alright, said Naruto. That was in the past. As she sniffled and backed away, sitting on across the mesh, she wiped away her tears. I want to ask, if you hated Kumo so much, why didn't you just leave? He asked her. Once you were strong enough, I can tell that you're strong. You can easily take most Jonin's without Nibi's help. How can he be so strong about what I've just witnessed? I mean, what happened to him? Because he's strong, said Nibi. Look at him, that was probably the worst thing he ever faced in the village. And yet look at him now. He persevered through it all. He pushed through it, where most people in this world have given up already. He's strong, very strong, not physically either. Emotionally. He has to be after all the torture he went through. And with not to my sama being inside him, I can guarantee that he's as sly as a fox as well. Pun intended. He's something else completely. It slightly scares me that he can be the same after everything he went through. But then again, by being sane after all that, he chose his true strength. As Yujito looked towards him with the highest respect, as she looked towards him, as she watched as the moonlight reflect off his face, she didn't know why, she felt strange, a feeling like she never felt before. She shook it off as just being sorry about his pain. Yujito, he said. Sorry, she said. It's because the woman that adopted me when I was 12 years old and saved me from my... Hell, she said. When I finally thought I was happy and free, the Raikage took her away from me. Ever since that day, he's used her to bend me to as well. Otherwise, I would lose her. I never wanted to be a shinobi, but I had to. I had to become a weapon, especially after the Raikage, brother, was killed by some weird group that was wearing black clouds with red cloak on it. So once they found leverage on me, I was forced into shinobi ranks despite not wanting to do so. Despite me, they call me Bukiai. And I have to stay there because if I don't, they would kill my mom. Naruto was surprised that she was willing to tell him all of this. But when it comes to people that can relate to your problem, you tend to open up to them. Even if you barely know them. I can certainly see why that would be a problem, he said. I'll see what I can do. She was confused. What, what do you mean, she said. He gave her a ranger and smile. We're Jinjulikis. There are just a few of us in the world. Most of us has been through hell already. Therefore, the people that we can count on for help and understanding is each other. So because of that fact, I'm going to do whatever I can to help you save your mom from Kumo. Unfortunately, I had avoided that village on my travels, so I have nothing on the inside. But I'll do my best to help you save her, said Naruto's voice, taking on a determined tone. Even so, she said, why do something like this for me? Someone you barely know, and I ain't Mish Nobi at that. Well, I can't help myself. What kind of person would I be if I didn't help someone reunite with their family? A family that loved them, he said. I'm sorry, but how can you say that to me? When only a few hours ago you told your own blood relative that they weren't your family. As Nerd lowered his head, that clan is not my family, he said. Having to realize in the memory I show you, my loving family was nowhere to be seen. As she then realized that they were nowhere there to help him. It's because they saw me as nothing but a demon that my father still in me. My family you speak of abandoned me in this village. That woman, my own mother, Kushna Uzumaki. Left me in Kanuha to suffer without caring about me at all. 
And that is why I went through all that hell. Because I had no one to help me. To protect me here. When the villagers got too much. Not even the old man who tried. He couldn't be everywhere at once. I don't understand, said Yujito. How can he turn out this nice and strong when the whole world has been against him? He's powerful. How could he just be willing to help me like that? But don't want anything in return. People who went through this suffering would turn into a monster but him. As I said, Kitten, you can see it on his face, the determination, the will to move forward despite everything he has done to him in the past. He's definitely strong, both physically and mentally, and I don't think anything will change that. You know, Kitten, I think you and him will make a perfect couple. But what? Remember I'm inside you, right? So I can know what you're feeling. And I know that something is starting to spark inside you. And he's the type of perfect male that only come once in a millennia. I'm not telling you to do anything immediately. I'm just saying do not deny these feelings inside of you. This is the first time in your life you've been smitten by a male. And you have my 100 support to go on with anything. Well, thanks for that, said Yujito. As she focused back on Ruto. I should have brought a book with me, said Ruto. Seeing her not pay attention again. S sorry about that, she said. As she blushed in embarrassment. And sorry about those my clan. I didn't mean to bring up bad memories. I just wanted to understand. Not a problem, he said. I have plans for those monkey clans, especially the ones that came in the exam. They interest me very much. So, was there anything else he asked? No, I think I learned more than I expected tonight. And thank you for the conversation. I... I had a good time, she said. I'm also happy to know that I'm not as alone as I thought I was even with. Is Nami-chan here? Not a problem. I'm glad I could help in any way, said Ruto. But there's something I have to tell you about the upcoming exams. At first, he had no plan about telling her about the exams. Well, they ended with her tomorrow what he was going to do. But hearing about what the right guy was doing and with that news on her neck, holding her mother hostage. If any of her teammates were to get killed, he was sure that the man would use this against her to say that she was doing her job right and perhaps harm her. Not physically, but mentally. So he informed her about everything. Thank you. This will make me keep a level head when everything happens. As she bowed in thanks. Not a problem. What is a problem though is I see like you have, he said. She looked towards her stomach confused. What do you mean, she said. Well, there's nothing wrong with the seal. I mean, it's a bit weak. Compared to mine. But I think, maybe, would like to stretch her legs. And you would like some peace and quiet in your head, but only your thoughts. She was confused. What do you mean by that, she said. You realize if she get released, we both die, correct? Yes, that is how it is with all of us. But I was thinking on the lines of what I proposed to Gara and Ichibai. A jutsu that would allow her be to walk free, well mostly, with her human body back. What? As Nibi was startled by hearing that, the chance was too good to pass up. Are you serious? 100% said Ruto. As he pulled at a scroll, you still look at the strange scroll. What is this? She said. Freedom said Ruto. Soul inhale, in a low. The user to place their soul inside a corpse that will change towards the user's features. But that's impossible, unless the soul has something anchored to the original body. They will die. How can this jutsu even work? The Nibi said, as Yujito repeated to Naruto. Well, that explained why Uchimaru didn't want to use the jutsu. Knowing that his soul would die if it's not anchored to his original body. Makes sense now, said Naruto. Yeah, she's correct, said Naruto, but the Nibi doesn't have an original body anymore, now does she? And the jutsu will have something linking her soul back to you. And that is where your seal come in. It will be linking you back together. Both of them were shocked. As it was true. That mean I can really be free? They be said in shock. Can you really do it? Asked Yujito as she looked at Naruto. Hoping that this was not some cruel joke. Yes, Natsuchan, and I have already done it. But we still share the same fate of death. If anything, said Naruto. So if one of you goes, the other goes as well. We're still linking some comparison. What do you think? Asked Yujito. I want to be free, to feel the air on my skin once again, to taste the wonderful food, the new smells, everything. But we have been together for so long, wherever you go, I'll always be there as well. Thank you. It means a lot to me. Even that we're free, you'll still stay with me. naruto san we have come to an agreement. Please do it. Very well then, said Naruto as he took the scroll. As he released her body from inside the scroll, it was none other than Sabuza. As he gave the scroll back to Yujito, place your blood across seal. Once you do, the one people that will be able to open it are myself, Natsuchan, and you. Who is this man? She said. Mamakai Zabusa, the demon of the mist, said Naruto. 
Myself and Team 7 fought in defeat him in a recent mission. Sir Nibisen, he was the strongest corpse I could find to accommodate your soul, said Naruto. She said for her freedom, she's willing to forgive you this once, said Yuji to with a laugh. Meet Naruto laugh as well. Alright, lie down here, said Naruto, she did as she was told. As he told to lift up her shirt, at first, she didn't feel anything for him when she was just meeting him, but now, it felt strange as he touched her stomach, as she felt a bit queasy, as a blush spread across her face. As Naruto activated Jutsu, there was a poof. As Naruto stepped back out of the smoke, the smoke cleared as two people got to their feet. As Naruto looked towards the young woman that was next to Yujito, she looked to be in her late 20s. A light pink kimono that was modified a red sash across her chest that showed off her bust. It ended halfway down her thighs. It made it look really, really short. She had violet color hair that was wrapped up in a ponytail that stopped at her shoulder blades. Black slitted yellow eyes that resemble a feline looked around the area, sharp, feminine face. Her teeth and nails were sharpened into claws. She had fluffy white hairs with two switching tail. As she crashed into Naruto all of a sudden and locked her lips against his. As Naruto acted visibly, well, pushed her back after a few seconds. I called Dib, she said, as she looked at him hungrily. As Naruto chuckled at her action, remembering Natsuma when she first saw him in his, well, demonic form. Why is almost every demon a sex starving vixen, he said. Well, let me lock you away for over a decade and see how you feel about your forwardness. I mean, you're the prime example of a perfect meal. So I don't mind, she says. She rubbed her hand up his chest going down. Touche, she said. Would you mind getting off of him? It's the voice. As Nibi got to her feet rather quickly, as Natsuma entered the clearing with a smirk on her face. Naruto can cheat now already, said Natsuma. With a smirk on her face. Really funny. How was I supposed to know she would jump me the moment she got released, said Naruto, as he picked himself up. Touche. I suppose I should have told you that she was the most vixen out of all of us. Sorry, Natsuma my Sama. I told you to stop calling me that. We've been friends for over 150 years. Hell, you even introduced me to Ashikan. As Nibi got to her feet and walked over and wrapped Natsuma in a hug. It's been too long. I missed you, she said. As she was happy to see her friend once again. It's good to see you too, she said. As Nibi pinched her butt. As Natsuma simply laughed at her friend's antics. As Naruto introduced Yujito to Natsuma and introduced her back. As Yujito gave her a friendly smile. But she saw Natsuma checking her out before smiling back. As Naruto went on to explain all the advantages of Jutsu and the drawbacks. When that was over, um, Naruto kan said Yujito. I know the exams are not gonna finish, but what if we have to fight each other early on? Well, we can put on a good show, said Naruto. I see. Then, I'll test your strength as well for myself. As Naruto smiled at that. Good. I want to see the strength the both of you have. Oh, you won't be disappointed there, Naruto kan I will turn you into my scratching post, said Inibi with a smirk. They had to return now, as tomorrow was the exam. As Yujito deactivated Jutsu on how Naruto taught her to do it. As Naruto had Natsuma transformed into her fox form and had her run interference with the guards as they entered by the village, undetected, unnoticed. As they said goodbye for now, Yujito made her way back to the hotel, as she had a lot to think about after her new acquaintance. Kitten, let's worry about that later. You need your rest for the exams, at least to keep Ariai and Akio alive in a way. Yeah, it's just a lot to think about. I met someone who even know my pain more than I do. He helped to set you free. He was even concerned about my life. And he said that you will have to say mom. It's just... He's just amazing. Yeah, I can understand he's certainly an amazing fellow. I believe that you will do great things in this world. Yeah, you're right, she said the smirk on her face. As she came and plopped down in her bed, her hand went towards her stomach where Nurta touched her. <laughs> you really had it bad, huh, kitten? Well, I'm glad you deserve it after all the crap you went through. Let's just hope that Natsumai is willing to share him. Meanwhile, with Naruto and Natsumai, I didn't know that you knew her for so long, said Naruto, as the two were making their way back to the compound. Yes, more than 150 years actually, even though I was her superior. Unfortunately, when me and Ashikon started our family, we weren't able to stay close. I see, and how close is close, said Naruto. I saw what she did when two of you hugged each other. I'm going to say something, but don't really think much into it. We used to fool around when we were single, alright? And we stopped. Oh. So that is where you found out how to use your tongue like that, huh? said Naruto. And this is why I didn't tell you, perv, she said, in a playful tone. As they made their way back to the house. Tomorrow was going to be a rather eventful day. Time skip. 
The team made their way towards train ground 44, as they saw that many people were already there, waiting for the proctor to arrive. As the siblings came over to them when they sat down. Oh, hey Gara, Tamara Chan, Conqueror said Naruto. We just want to wish you good luck in the exam, Tamara said, with a warm smile. Thanks, and good luck to you as well, Haku said that smile. Gara, have you come to a decision by chance, Naruto asked. Yes, we would like the help. Once the exam is over, said Gara. Both teams noticed, as not smile look around. Since Team Ice Fox entered, everyone is looking at them with a calculated gaze. Good, we'll deal with it once it's over then. Oh, hey, you'll see the voice. Naruto turned a smile. Oh, hey there, you still chat, he said. Hope you had a good night's sleep. Yes, she said, as she felt a bit embarrassed, given the fact that she was thinking about him that night. Oi, Bukenheim. Why did you walk off like that? I wanted to meet the competition, she lied, hoping that he would just drop it. What competition? All I see is a bunch of brats. Come on, the exam's about to start, let's go. Sorry, she said. Not a problem, said Naruto. I'll teach him how it feels to be arrogant. As Yuchito gave a small bow as she made her way off, what's with the new look? As Naruto turned, it was Sasuke, and it was directed towards him. He wasn't wearing anything really new. His black pants were more open at the bottom, and he was wearing a special sandals, and his arm guard, and his shirt was open, the show, the shirt underneath. Perhaps he is compensating, a boy from the stone team said as he glanced over to them. As Natsumai simply smirked at that, I wouldn't say 9 inches is small, she said, like she was discussing the weather. Many of the guys around looked down, as some of them looked disappointed to themselves. Did you really have to be so specific, said Naruto. Well, it shut him up. Besides, I'm not ashamed of it. You should definitely not be ashamed of it, she said. Huh, trying to boost his ego. To make him think that he's something special, a voice said. As Naruto turned his head, I'm not in the mood to deal with the three of you right now. So I suggest you shut your mouth and walk away. As Valios glare at Naruto, your time will come soon, demon. Enjoy your time as much as you can, my brother's body. I'll free him soon enough. I'll keep that in mind, said Naruto. Now would you mind going away? Your face. It's annoying me, said Naruto. Oh, and next time you see Kushina, tell her to watch the exams very closely. By the end, she will understand the truth. Team World who left after that. Damn, why the hell am I so popular, said Naruto. Who knows? But I hope the girls have heard me before aren't thinking of trying anything with you, said Natsumai. As she glanced towards Tamari and Haku, who blushed in embarrassment. Sasuke was stood there as he hadn't had his question and answer because of the interruption, and he saw the odd sandals that Naruto was wearing. He had read something about them somewhere, but he just couldn't remember, and he wanted to know every single thing about Naruto because next time they fight, he would be the one to win. But before he could say anything, Uncle Midarashi arrived with five tunings. All right, you little bastards, get over here. I'm not going to repeat the rules once again, so make sure you listen clearly. As she explained the rules to them. Alright, now get your scrolls, she said. I'm not taking any questions. As she gave them a sadistic smile, hoping that one of them would say something. But none of them did, as they got their scrolls. So, we're allowed to kill in the exams, huh? That's what I said. With an exciting grin on her face. Seems that way. But I bet I'm going to be hunted by a few teams, said Naruto. But let them come. As not so much smile at that, yes, let them come, she said. Sometimes they scare me, Haku thought. Although she knew they would never do anything to her, they had the bloodlust. Yes, it was there, and a lot of it as well. As she watched them talk about killing someone, like it was full of joy. But they took her in, and they were two really kind person to their friends. So with that, the gates opened up. All right, let's go, said Naruto. As they disappeared to the forest of death, they start to hop from treetop to treetop. Naruto-kun, how will we know what teams have what scroll? We won't, said Naruto. We'll simply start until we find our earth scroll. Isn't that a bit reckless? She didn't remember who she was talking to. N never mind, she said, as they chuckled. They ran a bit farther until they had to move on a large tree. It was one of the biggest they've ever seen. Whoa. Yeah, it's big, but here's bigger, said Natsumai. As she looked at the tree trunk, as Naruto almost lost his foot at the comment, until Haku heard wheezing behind them. Move, she said. A jagged edge rocks slam into the tree. Huh, seems they heard us coming. Well, it just means we can play with the Namikaze even more. As the stone team emerged from the underbush, we have a deadline to keep. If you have it, give it to us and leave the Haku. Or, the boy said, you can give us your scroll, and we'll only kill the Namikaze instead of three of you. You two girls. I'll make you live, he said, as he looked at them. If that is your choice, she said, she started to go through hand signs. As the stone team shot Kunai's towards her rather quickly, as they separated and went after a member of Ice Fox each. But Naruto went through hand signs just two. As he took in a breath, 
water leaks. Water, collision, destruction, he said. A water source was nowhere nearby. So when the stone shinobi saw the massive amount of water, he would have known where they were shaking to their core. They flashed through hand sign as they slammed their hands down, creating a massive earth wall. Three of them connected. I never thought he could summon so much water out of nowhere. We have to move. Wait, what the hell is that? Before any of them could say anything, they were all frozen. Not a bad combo. See, what I told you, Nurtokan, said Natsumai. Yeah, yeah, said Naruto, as he gave her a kiss as a reward. Good work, Haku-chan, he said, as Haku nodded. One take it from here, said Naruto. Gladly. Foxfire, she says, she launched. Two flaming balls towards them, and another towards the third one. The immense flame burned away the ice, as well as their clothing and flesh and bones of the snobis, leaving a puddle of boiling blood, water, and ashes, and the earth scroll. Huh, we're lucky, said Natsumai, as she skipped over. An earth scroll. And she's your mate, said Haku. Naruto froze at that. Did, did, did you just make a joke? As Haku had these to blush. I, I guess you guys are rubbing off on me, she said. As Naruto laughed, it's good to hear you joke around, he said. You're kind of a stick in the mud sometimes because you're always so damn proper, he said. As he ruffled here in a joking way. Well then, let's move. As they start to move back through the trees, they didn't come across anyone else as they made the way. After all, they got their scroll rather early. It only took them an hour to get there, work our time. As they arrived, they saw instructions they placed both of the scrolls down, and there was a poof. Congratulations, you three. Ah, uh, yo, Yamato-san, said Naruto as he recognized the Anbu voice. Oh, hey yo, he said, as he looked at the clock on the wall. Huh, barely an hour into it and already done, he said. I'm impressed. Well, I guess I shouldn't be. But still, rather impressive, he said. Guess that's a record. So what now, said Naruto. There are rooms here that you can stay in, eat and relax, until the other teams arrive. We have to wait on all of them, said Naruto. Unfortunately, yes, said Yamato. You're not allowed to leave the training grounds until the exam is finished. As they snort in annoyance, they have to stay here for five days. Nah, I think I'm gonna go check out by the forest, said Naruto as he turned. Yeah, that team didn't satisfy me that much, said Natsumai. As Yamato appeared in front of them, I'm sorry you two. But once you end the survival training, you cannot go back out. Are you going to stop us, Naruto asks? No. Just want to make sure you know that if anything happened, I won't be responsible. So if you would, go ahead, he said. Oh, said Naruto. Oi, Haku-chan, watch the fort. And go relax, said Naruto. And the both of them vanished. How many teams did you take down before getting here, asked Yamato. Only one, luckily. Those seal on its scrolls made them partially indestructible. Otherwise, we would have lost it. Hmm? Well, not some I got a bit too excited and she met the corpses. As Haku waved as she walked off, well, I wouldn't expect anything less. Thought. Yamato as he made his way. Meanwhile, with Naruto and Natsumai, the boat of them were near the entrance of the tower. How long do you think we need, he said. About two hours should be fine. But I can't be satisfied in that short amount of time, she said. Well then, I'll make it up later, said Naruto. Well, we do have our own room. So I guess you will. No, you definitely will, she said. As she kissed him, two hours then, she said she break apart. As she vanished in Shanshin, Naruto was about to do the same thing when he saw another team enter. Wow, you guys work fast, said Naruto. Clearly not fast enough, said Kankuro. Well, yeah. Anything interesting happened, Naruto asks. As he get head shakes in response, I have some business to take care of, so I'll see you guys later on. Congratulations, he said, as he walked off. Well, let's finish this up and get some well-needed rest like tomorrow. Both of them look at her, as they laugh at the sailor's statement. After all, they weren't exactly tired. Meanwhile, with Naruto. Now where are you, Kitty Kitty? said Naruto as he looked at the entire forest from a high tree branch. Huh. He laughed at his bad joke. He knew that Yujita would be fine, but she had to protect her teammates as well. And he just wanted to keep an eye on her to make sure that she got to the tower okay. As he made his way, as he passed by a few things, but none of them saw him because he was moving incredibly fast until he heard some loud explosions as he made his way to see what it was. As Naruto had to see that it was Yujito team facing off against a rain team, that Arya guy. He was a decent fighter despite his arrogance. That guy kind of reminded him of Sasuke. He was not really needed as he sat down in a tree branch as he watched the fight commence. Meanwhile, Ariai delivered several fast punches to the range Nobe, knocking him down. I guess you like my lightning fists. I'm not the right kind of son for nothing, you know. Not bad, brat, the range Nobe said, as he seemed like a full grown man. But you pissed me off, and now you're gonna pay for that. Water style, black claw technique. As black mist seeped from his body before rain knocked the sky, it then poured on as strange. 
syrupy rain on them that was rather sticky. It got on all the Kumo shinobis except the rain shinobis were perfectly fine and dry. What is this? Akiko asked as she felt liquid between her fingers. She recognized the texture. Oil. Very good, the summoner said. Now he screamed as one of the rain ninjas shot forward and fire wires towards Arya and Akiko. They tried to move but the thing was so sticky they could barely run. As they were trapped, the wire bound them rather quickly. Well, well, look what we have here. The leader. The one that got those lightning fists in. You can only save one of them. Who will it be? The Raikagi. Shakespeare of a son. Or the girl that seemed to respect you, if only slightly. Yujito curse. Despite her speech, she wouldn't need to get them in time. She could have ended this battle the moment that they came. But Aryan decided that he wanted to have a crack at them. And now he was paying the price. And she knew if any of them died, this would be her fault. The Raikagi would blame her for it, saying that she was not strong enough to protect his son or her other teammate. Save me, I'm your superior, dammit, said Aryai. Meanwhile, as Naruto saw what was happening, he pulled at a Konai as Yujito. Watch as the Rain Ninjas got ready. Time's up, fire style. Fireball Jutsu, as the fireball was a launch. As much as she wanted to save Akeko and leave Aryai to burn, her body, her subconscious knew that she had to save the Raikagi's son. As the two fireballs were going to hit the both of them, her speed was enough to slash the wires and pull him away. As the fireball slammed into the tree that he was tied to and slammed into the other, Akeko she screamed as the fireball swelled into her tree where Akeko was tied to. Lewis knew the only person that treated her like a human, except for her mother, at Kumu. As Yujito turned towards the rain team, as her eyes turned murderous, they never saw that chance in the first place and now she was angry. But before she could do anything, lightning release, lightning strike technique, three, piercing quick lightning came down and strike three inch nobis. They scream out in pain and agony as their insides were fried. Their body was decimated, unrecognizable after the attack hit them with such velocity and force. As Yujito saw someone land, right in the center, a Akeko, she said, as Akeko stood there unharmed. Used to rush over and rocked her up in a tight hug. Good. I thought we'd have to forfeit because you died. Said Ariai. Don't be such a smart ass. You're only alive because Yuchito saved you. Be grateful. Why? For doing what she was born to do. Me. Thank her. The idea was laughable to him. She did her job. I see no reason to praise her for that. Now let's check to see if they have the scroll. Asshole. Said Akiko. As she started to search for the scroll. Hey. How the hell did you escape the wire? And where did you learn the lightning jutsu from? Asked Aryai. As Akiko stopped searching, I don't really know she said I remember being tied to the tree and the fireball coming towards me. The next thing I know the wires were cut. After I felt a strong breeze, I ran the tree and then yeah, the rest you know. As far as the jutsu I've been working on it for a long time now. It's one of my most powerful she said. A strong breeze huh? Thought Yujito. As Yujito found the scroll, she sighed it was a heaven scroll, they already have a heaven. Something hit her on the feet. As she picked it up, to her surprise it was a scroll, a earth scroll. She looked around but she saw nothing. As she saw there was a paper attached to the scroll, as she read it, No you owe me one Niko-chan. Get to the tower, I'll see you there. Nurutukan she thought. As a small blush came on her face, he was that strong breeze that released Akeko, saving her. I certainly do owe you one. You know kitten, I can give him that favor if you don't want to. Said Nibe. Yujito snorted. I found the scroll, and it's Archie said. Good, then let's get the hell out of here, Arya said as he jumped off. Bastard, Akiko said, as she turned towards Yujito. Are you okay? Your face is really red. Oh, oh I'm, I'm fine, said Yujito. Hmm, fine. You mean flustered, said Nibi. As Akiko looked at her, she has been acting strange ever since we got to know her. As she keep eyeing her to make sure that she's okay. Meanwhile, with Naruto, as Naruto was making his way here that scream and the panicked voice of Sakura Yes it sounded like Yes it was her That scream did not sound normal It sounded like a dead scream He launched himself off the branch that he was on breaking it in pieces Deeper in the forest was Team 7 Sai looked like he was dead He was lying against a tree trunk His body was covered in blood and bruises Some of his fingers were broken in the way they pointed in the other direction He was in a bad condition but he was not dead Naruto heard his heartbeat. As for soccer, her wrists were mangled, and they were purple. She was panting exhaustedly, as she was watching the scene in front of her with nothing but shock. 
As Naruto saw a pale, grass Nobi biting Sasuke in the shoulder, as Naruto figured that the man was done with them, and he would take a scroll and leave. What are you doing to Sasuke Kun? Sakura screamed. The man released Sasuke as Sasuke dropped the ground, gripping the mark tightly that he just received. Me? Why nothing, my dear? I'm simply giving Sasuke the thing that he desires most, which is power. What do you mean you hurt him? How can that possibly help him? Sakura screamed at him. You're much too innocent and naive to know anything. That Marky has the power of my strength. And the moment he uses it, he will seek me out for more. And more and more and more. Sasuke's mind was filled with rage. This man told him that he could give him the power to defeat his brother. And it was all that Sasuke ever wanted. Sasuke Khan, when you finally realize that this village is just holding you back from your true potential, seek me out. Sasuke Khan, seek out Orochimaru. As the man started to sink into the tree. Meanwhile, as the man vanished near the eyes snap. Uh, Orochimaru? He didn't think Orochimaru had the gall to enter Kanoha. Consequences be damned as Naruto dropped the illusion and entered into his adult form, his real form. But his tails were not out, as he created a mass amount of shadow clones spreading through the air to find where the man went. After some time he found him fighting someone else, as he shot forward with tremendous speed. Meanwhile, with Uncle, Orochimaru laughed. I am disappointed Uncle Chan, he said. After all the years we've been separated, you haven't gotten any stronger, he said. Screw you, you traitorous snake, she shouted at him. Unfortunately, she couldn't do anything but shout, as he had pierced her right through the hand against the tree, and her coat as well. She was beaten. She couldn't do anything all these years. He was right, she wasted them. She didn't have the strength to put him down after everything. He put her through, as she glared at him, but he simply smiled, that mocking smile. Although you haven't gotten any stronger, you've certainly gotten looser. I've heard around the village that you would not hesitate to beg any meal. You know, I'm disappointed as a teacher. I thought I taught you the right ways, but I guess not. But when you were my student, you were always fascinated with me, he said, as he trailed his hand on her shirt going down. With that smile on his face, she spat at him as he moved his head. Oh, now, now, now. Don't be so disgusting, my dear, he said, as he licked her cheek. As his hand started to lower, Having the power over someone, having the power to do whatever you please, Urchimaru live for something like that. The cold, wicked hearted snake. But before he could do anything, his hand was targeted by a kunai as he had to move it. I'm disappointed that you brought back up. I thought you have faith in your skills, take me on alone, Urchimaru said. But he did not look back. You lost your touch, he said. As he simply poked her in the head. My stupid, stupid student, he said. Before giving her a tiny slap. Well, I guess I'll handle your backup. And who is it out there? She did not call for me. But I am here to kill you. Kill me, Urchimaru said. Do you know who I am? As he looked around. As Naruto stepped forward out of the shadows. Urchimaru snarled. Just a boy? Do you think you can defeat me? I admire your bravery, but you're just... Stupid. You think you can step towards me? You remind me of someone. That idiot. Stupid naive fool, Jiraiya. My ex teammate. Oh. Why don't you step away from uncle? And let us see. Who is in the wrong? said Naruto. As Urchimar stepped away from the shivering woman, as he looked at Naruto with mock disgust and disinterest, as Naruto smirked at that before he released his chakra, Urchimar snarled in confusion. Where the hell is this? Who is this boy? As the power was unnaturally strong, stronger than he expected, no wonder he's so confident. As Naruto looked towards uncle, she looked like she was gonna die from blood loss. Sir Natsuchan, he said. I'm gonna end this. As Naruto shot forward, Urchimaru smirked, bringing his arm up to block the kick. But what he never expected was a strength. His body was launched off the branch and smashed to a tree. Who the hell is this? Urchimaru thought. Just who is this? Who the hell trained him? Sir Tobi Sensei wouldn't allow anyone to be trained like this ever since the Itachi incident. And Danzo would not openly try to put anyone against me like this. So who is he? Urchimaru thought. As Urchimar was surprised by the speed once again, as a right hook smashed into his stomach before crashing into his jaw, launching him backwards. He flipped though as he went through Hansine. He didn't shadow snakes, he said. As Naruto ran right towards the snakes, the Urchimar shot the snakes past through him, and after image, blam, a feet connected in the side of Urchimar's head that crashed him into the ground. He was then kicked straight up into the air as Naruto appeared behind him, dropping the axe kick into his stomach. He smashed in the ground like a bomb. As Naruto dropped, Rusengan, he said, as he dropped it into Urchimaru's chest. 
as Naruto obliterated the thing that he hit, but it was too strong, it was not flesh. As Naruto then turned as he saw Urchimaru, the real one, as he was holding a cone at Uncle's throat, now now Urchimaru said, no need to get hostile, we're shinobis after all, we use whatever means to get what we want. As Uncle regained some of her consciousness, she looked over, it was Hannah's friend that was saving her, Hannah's boyfriend. What exactly do you want, said Naruto? Ah, now you're getting it. What I want to know is who the hell are you? Who trained you? And how exactly do you know the Rasengan? I may have not lived in this for a few decades now. But I know only a select few knew that jutsu. And I don't know a few. So who the hell are you? And even if I tell you how do I know you won't kill her anyway, said Naruto. True be told, Urchimaru said. All you have to go on is my word. But I promise you. Once you tell me, I'll leave Uncle Chan alone. As Naruto watched him, he knew that the man was lying. My name is Kazuma Arashi. I learned Rasengan from Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze. We met in Snow Country. And after, thanking me for my companionship while we were there, we exchanged jutsus. And he taught me the Rasengan. As for who I learned from, there are too many people to count. I've been a wandering shonen for most of my life. I pick up things here and there, said Naruto. Orochimar didn't know a lot about him, still if he was lying. As Naruto was looking at Uncle, he knew that Hana would be crushed if her best friend was dead, and he wouldn't let it happen. Well, I'll take you on your word, Urchimar said. And besides, you have to get Uncle some medical help, so I can assure that you won't follow me. Very well, he said, as his tongue came out and licked Uncle's cheek before he went though. You still taste sweet like Dongo. I guess you haven't kicked that habit of yours, have you, Uncle? We will see each other again, Kazumara, she said. As he melted away in the tree, in an instant, Naruto was beside Uncle. As Uncle looked towards him with a thankful gaze, but guys, it'll be in tips right here. If you want to see the next part, then do like, subscribe, comment down below, and turn on that bell notification as you posted. Remember, share with all of your friends in social media platform. And also, guys, go ahead and check out the brand new episode of What If Naruto Was the Hope of the Uchiha Clan and enjoy that, guys. Over an Anime King. And also, over an Anime King 3, I post a brand new episode of What If Naruto Had the Ultimate Nature Bloodline. So go ahead and check out that and enjoy guys. And yes, if you're new, you heard that correctly. I indeed have three channels, Anime King, Anime King 2, Anime King 3, which I post what if on every single day for you guys to enjoy. So go ahead and click that red subscribe button and become a part of the Anime King family. And thank you for all of your help and support. Remember to comment down below and tell me if you're new. I'll be playing talking about to all of you. So yeah, without further ado, um, for now, see you guys soon. Peace.